everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another live class. I am particularly so excited for this class because it is just something that is very dear to me and dear to my heart for a long time. Um, as you might have guessed by the, the style of this class, it, is, it does take inspiration from Rob Ross. Um, I wasn't allowed to use like one of his photos for the, um, for the reference, um, just due to copyrights and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so I created this in inspiration. Um, of his paintings. Now, obviously we can't do Bob Ross techniques because we're in acrylics, but that's kind of the point of this class because growing up, I wanted to paint like Bob Ross. I wanted to paint his simple uh, abstract, or not abstract, um, landscapes, his, his like simple style of landscapes, but I never could because I, was, I always did acrylics and I couldn't do oil. Um, and it is just something that I've always wanted to do. And now that I'm a lot more uh, fluent in acrylics, um, I wanna teach it. I wanna teach his style of simple painting, uh, simple um, landscapes with beautiful mountains and clouds and happy little trees. Um, so that is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do it in acrylics. Um, so if, you're, uh, if you wanna paint along, please grab your brushes in canvas and we're gonna have fun. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do this in acrylics. We're not painting oil today, we are painting acrylic. Um, so yeah, let's go get started. Um, if you would like a traceable for this class, now typically for landscapes, I like to teach without a traceable, but I do understand that a lot of people like to have some sort, like like a blank canvas is sometimes can be scary. Um, especially when you're beginning and you're like, I have no idea what I'm doing or just proportions or where to put things um, can be scary. So I do still have a traceable for this class and this one is free. So because I wanted to do this simplistic kind of Bob Ruff style um, class, I initially made it free because I didn't want to make any money off of the traceable. Um, obviously you can still donate if you want, you can still join as a patron as you want. You'll get other, ac you'll get access to all my other traceables too. Um, but this specific one is free. So if you are, um, it will forever be free. So if you are, uh, painting along live or if you're painting along years from now, you can still go into my Patreon, grab it for free. If you're seeing the picture, it's not locked. You just have to scroll down and um, you can view the files that are attached to the post um, and that is what you click. It'll download it for you, whether on your computer or an iPhone or Android, whatever, um, iPad, like download it, use it if you want it. It's there for you to use. Um, and yeah, I also have access to a ton of other traceables um, in my Patreon if you're interested in becoming a patron um, or other um, or other tutorials, things like that. So feel free to read up on that, but um, that is available free. And I have posted a link um, already in the chat as well as um, in the description box. I'll be posting that and I'll also have a little um, link to it above, okay? So yeah, that's that. Let's go over supplies and then I'll go over kind of what's happening in Patreon. Okay, I'll give you an update on our frog painting. 
Uh, so I'm going to be using an 11 by 14 stretched canvas. You can use whatever canvas you want. You can use um, a smaller canvas, a bigger canvas, a round canvas, an oval canvas. I think personally landscapes like this look, really look good on anything. Um, so use what you have. Don't feel like you need to go get out, you know, exactly what I'm using, but I am using an 11 by 14. I feel like they're a really good size. You know, they make a statement on the wall, but they're not too big that you can't put a couple up. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm using. And the, uh, I have my water, my paper towel, my palette. I have a scraper that I can just scrape off paint if I need to, um, to clean. I also have a palette knife. Now this wasn't like a specialty thing that I put in the description or anywhere, um, but I will be using palette knives today. I know sometimes palette knives can be a little scary. If you have a palette knife and you would like to use it, please paint with me and use a palette knife. Um, if you have questions, feel free to, to comment down below. Even if you're watching this at, at a different time, still, still um, post your question um, and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Um, yeah, we will be using a palette knife. If you don't have a palette knife, you can get an old credit card. You can even, you, I've, I've had students even use like normal knives to get some really cool textures. So any flat surface, um, would probably work, but I use a palette knife on like on the daily to mix my colors. So, um, if you don't have one for that, I would highly recommend getting it. And if you want the one specifically that I have, um, I have a link down below for the set that I have. Um, brushes, I'm going to be using just my typical brushes that I use. I have my, um, large filbert. I have a medium, oh, where's my medium? I'm like a medium to small filbert. Um, and then I also have a smallish round brush and then a liner brush. Um, I don't know if we'll even need the liner brush, but I like to have it on hand just in case. And then today we will also be needing some type of a square brush. So I usually don't use a lot of these, um, but I do want to have some sort of a square so I can get uh, whoa, what is happening? I can get the top. What are you focusing on? Why is my camera being weird? Hello. I don't know why I was doing that. Um, what was I saying? Um, I am going to need, oh wow, this is so weird. I hope it doesn't do that the whole class. What is it focusing on? Give me a second to troubleshoot this. I don't know why it's doing that. I've never had that happen before. Okay. Once I start painting, it'll probably, cause it'll have my hands in here and it'll figure itself out. Um, what do I think is we're gonna want to have some sort of a, um, a flat brush. Where did I put my brush? Here we go. Um, to do like the corners, um, the tips of the uh, mountains. So you are gonna wanna have some sort of a flat or um, angled brush of some sort that has that type of square edge or tip um, to get those nice little neat points in there, okay? Um, and then I have a couple different palette knives, but any palette knife that you have will probably be fine. This is a very beginner class and we're just gonna have fun. Uh, for the colors, now the colors are very like, choose your own adventure. Um, I know the, the one I was originally inspired by uses a lot more blues, but I thought it'd be fun to do a little bit more of like a sunsetty coloring. Um, so instead of blues, it has a lot more warmer colors. So that's what we're going to be doing today. If you want to go the traditional route of like the blues and the greens, um, and like maybe some fall colors in there, that's totally fine. Do what you want. Um, but I'm going to be teaching kind of this peachy, um, pretty, uh, sunset color. Okay. Uh, so for the colors, let me move all this. For the colors, we are going to have our black and white, and don't be confused by the bottles. They are not soft body acrylics, which is like the like almost poor paint acrylics. They're not those. They are Hippie Crafter uh, full full body acrylics um, that you normally get out of the tubes. They just come um, in these little bottles for this brand. Uh, so I have black and white. I have a brown so that I can tint the green. I have green and blue so I can 
um, tint the green as well as um, put in that background. And then we have, I'm gonna need some yellow and then also red. So essentially you have your primary colors of your yellow, red, and blue. And the type of blue I have is phthalo blue. But you could probably also use um, ultramarine blue if you needed it. So just, again, whatever you have on hand. And then I have my green. If you have a darker green that you want to use, that is totally fine. I tend to like the bright green because then I can really tint it whatever color I need. Um, I have a really good base to start with. Um, and then I can mix colors in. I usually mix, uh, you know, pretty much any of these colors I can mix and just create whatever green I want. Um, whether it's a warmer green, a cooler green, a blue green, a purple green, whatever, whatever color uh, green I want, I can do that. Um, but yeah, those are pretty much the colors. So just primary colors, green, you could make green from your yellow and your blue, um, but I have a green on hand, and then brown, black and white. So pretty basic colors. Um, okay. Um, let's go ahead um, and I'm going to go ahead and draw this in with you and then I will go over um, announcements because um, I want you guys to be able to have enough time to kind of like figure out where everything is. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab and I do this a lot when I'm trying to like sketch out or figure out like where everything's going. If I don't do it on a piece of paper, I'll do it directly on the canvas and that way I can just kind of keep going. Um, I'm going to get out some white and then I'm also going to get out, uh, let's see, just the slightest bit of yellow. And the reason I like to use yellow is because it's a very light color and I'll still be, I will be able to just paint over all of this um, without the yellow coming through. If I use a color like a dark color like brown or black or even red, um, those colors are going to be a lot harder to uh, paint over. So if you have the traceable, go ahead and put that on now um, if you haven't already. And I would suggest doing that in a very, very light pencil um, and even like very, very light. And what I mean by that is um, only as light as you can see it, no darker. So because um, if you if you do it too dark, then you might have to like do a double coat of paint to be able to go over it. So I'm going to grab a little bit of water, some white and a touch of yellow. And the yellow is just to tint the color so that I can see it. It's mostly white and I'm going to tint mine a little bit darker so that you can see it on camera. Um, again, with like with just like the pencil, only only have it as dark as that you can see it. No darker. And this is just so it's easier to. Um, paint over when we're done. All right, so I want the tip of this to almost, re almost reach the top of the canvas, but not quite, and it's a little off center. So I'm gonna put a little dot there. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Maybe I'll go a little bit darker for the sake. Once I start putting this in, you'll probably see it better. Um, and then I'm just gonna come down, just do a little triangle and you can always kind of fix this as we go. I have a lot of water in my mixture so that um, so that it dries really fast and I could even kind of wipe it down if I needed to, if there was too much paint. Um, I'm all about using your hands. Like if you need to paint with your hands, go for it. Uh, so I'm gonna come down um, and then kind of just come up, give it a little, give some hills in there. It does not need to look exactly like the um, the reference, okay? And I'm gonna come down, give a give another little peek, okay? And it, it, do, it also doesn't need to be a straight line. That's what's really cool about mountains is that they are all different shapes and you're not really even gonna see the one over here, but I'm still gonna put it in. And then as we move our way down, about halfway down is the top of our water line. So not the bushes, just the water line. So right here, we're gonna put in our water line. It's about, it's pretty much um, the middle of the canvas. And it's just ever so slightly rounded, just ever so slightly. And if you wanted to make it a straight line, you could.
And you can do anything you want. Okay, so after we do that, we're gonna go ahead and put in our, uh, our foliage. So it's just the line above here, just a little line, it doesn't have to be, we just, we just kinda, we know it's there. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and put in the rest of this and we have a little, um, a little one right here. I'm just gonna put a little curve and I'm gonna do another curve um, a little bit above that. Right, and that's pretty much it. The rest is like, you have your trees, but we're gonna put in our trees. We're gonna put in our happy little trees later. Okay, uh, so now that we have that, go ahead and take your time, um, put in all that. You can put in your the sticks of your trees if you want to. I would recommend not doing that yet because um, we're just gonna be focused on the background. So while you guys finish up that, I wanna go over uh, the live class that we did last week, um, as well as what's going on in Patreon. So last week, if you weren't here, um, or if you're new to the channel, this is what we did last week. We did a cute little sheep with a spring bouquet. I, From here on out, I really wanna do these once a year. Last, week, last year we did a cow. Um, and this year we did a sheep. I love them both. Um, so if you like this sort of thing or you like doing animals or flowers, uh, this is definitely a fun one. Um, and we even put in some one stroke roses. So if you've never done one stroke roses before, this one was a fun one to do. Um, I don't go in depth about it, but I do go over them a little bit. Um, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, so if you wanna go back and do that, feel free. It's free on my channel um, and you can go back and paint that one. In Patreon, I've gone over this a few times, um, but in my Patreon, once a month, I will do a, uh, I will do a exclusive tutorial just for those who support me um, at the ten dollar ten dollar level. So not only would you get this class, but you would also get every other class that I've ever done in my Patreon for the ten dollar level. Um, so that's the magenta tier. So if you want to paint this one, super fun, a lot easier than it might look. Um, you're really just having fun with light and each color kind of represents a tone of light and it was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, so if you want to go paint this, make sure you go and paint that. Um, it's in my Patreon and it will forever stay in my Patreon. It, it's not going to go away. So all the links to that post will stay there. So even if you're painting um, this a year from now, this post will still be available in my Patreon. Um, so yeah. And then... Let me give you a little update on our little frog. For those of you who have been following me, we are painting a frog in the $20 level tier. And with that, you get each week, uh, we do about an hour to an hour and a half of painting. And it's live, but you can always you can always go back and watch the ones that you missed um, or previous month's class. This is the kind of update for everything. Um, for this frog, I am so excited. It was supposed to post this morning and I don't remember if it posted this morning, I'll have to look. But um, yeah, this is what we are, um, this is kind of the update on that one. Um, all we have left to do, there's, I'm gonna do some water drops in the back and then we have our frog. So I am super excited. I love how it's coming out. Um, it looks so like jungle foresty. Um, and then you have this cute little frog. So um, thanks for following along with me. I'm really excited for that one. And I can't wait for, um, yeah, I can't wait for it to be done. Uh, okay, let's move on um, to the rest of this painting. So hopefully that was enough time to um, put all your kind of lines in, all the ones you want. You don't have to be too detailed with it, um, but enough to get enough to get it on there. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and make our peachy sky. So this one's going to be fun. Um, we're going to have mostly white, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of red. So those are kind of the colors. So let me grab my red out, get that out here. If you have orange, you could use um, orange. Apologies, trying to get my red. There we go. And I'm going to grab my palette knife just so that I can mix the, mix the color. It's mostly white. It's mostly going to be white. So 
So I have white, um, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of red. Really try to put as little as possible on here so that you can um, kind of adjust as you go. Even that tiny little bit of red um, and yellow completely changed the whole, like all of that white, it made it like pink. All right, so I want mine a little bit, a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna put some more white and a tad bit more yellow. All right, so I think that's a really fun color. And then as we move our way um, down, we're just going to um, maybe add like a tiny bit more yellow in it. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just a little bit of this off to the side, add a tiny bit more yellow and a tiny bit more white. If you are new to painting, I highly recommend pre-mixing all of your colors that you intend to blend together. So something like the sky, you're gonna wanna um, you're going to want to pre-mix those colors. Now, Bob Ross or something, somebody who uses oil, you can literally like put it on there and then 10 minutes come back and put a different color on there and mix it all together. You can't do that with acrylics. Acrylics needs um, to kind of be done all at once. So if you're not used to blending on the canvas, um, pre-mixing your colors is a really, really good thing. And it's, and it's just, it'll really, really help you. Um, so I have kind of this pinky peach. I know it's kind of hard to tell because they're all really light colors. I have a pinky peach and then I have a little bit more of a yellowy peach that I'm also going to add a little bit of white. So not only am I getting lighter, but I'm also getting a little bit more yellow. Okay, and so I'm going to blend that down. And then while it is still wet, we are gonna take a um, a round brush. This is the one I like to use for clouds. I'm going to take a round brush and I'm just going to put in some some white and it's going to blend into the sky and that's going to make our clouds. So that's what we're doing in this section. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe off my palette knife. I'm going to grab my large brush and because we are um, doing a blend, I'm going to work from top down. So the first thing I'm going to do is wet my brush, dab it off a little bit, grab this peachy color, the darker color, and I'm going to do the top first just so I can get that out of the way. I won't have to worry about it later or worry about forgetting about it later. <laughs> I'm just going to paint this whole section I'm also gonna do the sides a little bit, just get a start on that. All right, so now that I have that, I'm gonna go back into my peachy color. And when you're mixing this on the canvas, it does have a lot of white on it, or in the color, so, That'll be nice for its um, opacity. It'll be pretty um, opaque and not translucent, but you don't want to, you still don't want to use too much water because then it will start um, becoming um, very, very translucent. So I have a pretty good glob of paint and it took me all the way across the canvas. And how I like to do this is I will go I'll put my paint on there and then I will go all the way across the top in very, very big, long strokes. I'm gonna go about halfway down. So now I'm gonna go into my other color and fill in the rest. And I'm going over that yellow line. I can still see it a little bit. 
and I'm going to go into my white a little bit so that it is even lighter. I'm going into my white. And then into my kind of yellowy peach color. And ways that you can blend it, ways that you can blend it is going back and forth kind of in a crisscross motion. So I'll show you. I'm going to put some white here. I'm going to put some white here. And then I'm just going to go back and forth in little tiny crisscrosses and work it up. Just so it's a little bit and I almost want like a tad bit of purple at the top and it's still it's still wet so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this peachy color and I'm gonna add just like a tiny bit well, it's kind of turning it green because of the yellow so let's see can I add maybe I can add a little bit more red to it I think that worked a little bit better. Yeah, so I just added a little bit of red to it. I'm just going to add it at the top a little bit, just to add a little bit of color. And I'm just going to blend that big long strokes. And you'll see there's kind of like that line there. Watch it disappear. I'm just gonna go all the way across it and gently bring it down. Just like that. So now what we're gonna do, while it's still a little bit wet, I'm gonna take my round brush and I'm going to I'm gonna start off to the side and I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just gonna wiggle it and you'll start seeing these beautiful clouds emerge and I know that there's a and you can just blend the bottom of it down And I'm just kind of focusing on the tops of this. I'm not really focusing on anything else other than kind of just trying to blend the bottom a little bit. So again, I'm gonna grab my white. I really like this one that's like peeking up here. And I don't have a whole ton of paint. I think that's the trick with this is one, the background is slightly wet, so it is it is blending into that. The second is I don't have a ton of paint on my brush. And if I do, the first time I go on there, I'm gonna put it where I want it the whitest, and then I'm going to work only on the tops, kind of work wiggling my brush, and then I'm gonna come back and wiggle all around the bottom of it to blend it in. And that has a really, really soft effect on the bottom and the rest of this. We can come back in here with something that's maybe a little bit brighter. You can even layer the clouds by just coming in a little bit stronger with the white. See how that's like a cloud on a cloud? I'm still just kind of moving my brush around. I'm going to put a cloud up here. So I'm focusing on just the top of it, moving my brush around. And now I'm just going to blend the bottom and the outside a little bit. Maybe I'll come back over here and make this a little bit more defined. A 
If you have a um, other canvas, make sure that you go off the side. If you have, or not an other canvas, a stretch canvas, make sure you go off the side and continue those clouds all the way over. Really, really easy way to do clouds. Now I want this one to trail down here a little bit, like in my reference photo, so I'm just going to put a line and then I'm just going to blend the bottom of it just by going in little circles with what's left on my brush. There you go. And lastly, I'm going to continue the top of this all the way into my mountain so that it's kind of like it goes behind the mountain. All right, so now that we've done our clouds, we're gonna go ahead and do our mountain. So we are gonna need some of these colors again for down here, but we will have to, we will get to that after we're done with our, um, our mountain. Because we're going to need, um, because acrylics dries, just like in the background, just like in the sky, we have to do, because the reflection is a part of the water, we'll need to do that the same time, um, like all together, not like separately. So we can't like do the background color and then come back to the mountain reflection. We'll have to do that at the same time. So that's why we're kind of waiting on it. Um, so let's go ahead and get our other colors out. We're going to make kind of like a purpley blue. So I'm going to grab this blue that I have. I'm going to grab a little bit of the red and add that together. And this is really dark, so I am gonna add a tiny bit of white to it. And I know by the amount that I have and the amount I have to um, paint that I'm gonna need a little bit more than this. Mix this all together. I'm gonna mix a little bit more of my red into it. So it's not quite purple, but it's not phthalo blue. It's kind of like a, it's got like a gray tone to it. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, if you have tape, um, go ahead and get that out. If you do not have tape, that is totally okay. You'll just have to be a little bit more careful um, as you're going around. Don't worry about the curve. I'm just gonna put this about the area, the top of where um, that line is. And the reason for this, the reason why it's okay that it's a line and not a curve is because this whole section is going to be covered by black, like a black undercoat. Um, so it's totally fine um, if it doesn't, you know, follow the curve because uh, we're going to be covering all that with black anyways. I just don't want it to come down into this area yet because then because it's such a dark color, it's going to be a lot harder to 
go over. So if you have tape, feel free to put that on now. If you don't, you're just going to have to be a little bit more careful when you're blending at all, okay? And I apologize for not putting that in the um, initial, uh, I almost said ingredients. My brain is on cooking right now. Um, uh, a supply list. I mean, it's it's in the supply list, but I didn't, I didn't mention it at the beginning. That's one of those things that I always have on hand in case I want to use it. Um, it's not necessarily a thing that I have to like dig out of my garage or anything. Um, okay, so what we are going to do, go ahead and make sure you have white on hand because we are going to be blending this. Um, with white as we get to the bottom. So you'll notice at the top it is the darkest and at the bottom it's the lightest. So use that to your advantage. We're gonna go ahead and grab our um, our flat brush. If you have a large flat brush feel free to grab that. Um, I'm gonna use this size. Not too big um, but it's not this one was a little bit um, on the smaller side and I just felt like I needed a, a bigger one. So I'm gonna dip it in water and then dry it off a little bit just so it's not dripping with water because we want this to be very um, opaque. So I'm gonna grab just that blue. I'm gonna figure out where, so this is about where my line was. And it doesn't have to be, um, perfectly like your lines don't have to be um, perfectly straight most mountains let me tell you are not straight they're not perfectly straight Let's say that maybe even give yourself a little bit of a wiggle on the way down I'm going to focus mostly on the top here, making sure that this paint is in. And once you get kind of the tops of it, if you find that it's the paint is being difficult in, um, like you still see all the white canvas behind it. Try to grab just like a tiny bit of water. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna grab some white and I'm just gonna put this at the bottom. Put some white, I'm just going straight into my white I'm not rinsing out my brush. And sometimes I like to do what I call the wiggle. <laughs> really trying to work in the paint. Grab some more. And I'm just gonna start mixing it and blending it with what's already on the canvas. And you can go in circles. You can go up and down and just try to mix that. And something like this, you can go in circles, just the line where it mixes. And then you can go up a little bit and do smaller circles. And then once you kind of have that mixed, you can do longer strokes. The more times you go over something, the more it's gonna mix. And if you end up bringing it like too far up, go ahead and rinse out your brush. Like if you think that the, the, the white goes, I think this is fine, but if you think it's too, if you, you know, you brought up the white too much, go ahead and dip back into your dark color. 
go to the top and just brush down and you can pull down that darkness again. I'm gonna go into my white just a little bit more. Again, the more you go over it, the more light it's going to be, the more blending it's going to be. All right, so I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and let that dry a little bit. And we are going to, uh, we want this to be dry before we put in our um, white. So we're gonna go ahead and work on the, um, the, the, what do we call it? The, the bottom part, <laughs> the lake. So I have to remix my color, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Um, let's see, white, red, and yellow. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remix this color. So I need my white a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow. make just a little bit more just in case I don't want to run out during this I'm gonna make sure that I have enough it's a lot easier to make more now than it is after you've already started painting and then you're like, oh, please don't dry. All right, so we have um, a little bit of the um, mountain in this reflection, so I'm just going to um, pull this off. Now I always like to put it off to the side just in case I need it again. I probably won't, but you never know. It's always the time that you think you're not going to use it that you're like, oh man, I wish I would have kept that piece of tape. Now I have to get more. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to with a little bit of water just kind of put this in this is kind of the general area of where it is remember that the the reflection is kind of seeing it at a different angle than we are so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, this time we're going to be working, before we worked from um, top to bottom, and now we're working from bottom to top. And I don't know why, my camera is looking very, very orange right now. 
So give me a second to fix the coloring so you actually see what I see um, and not the orange hue that is going on right now. That's about, that's a lot better. That's about what I see. Okay. So it's definitely not as muted as um, my photo originally was, but that's okay. Um, okay, so I just vary with, with um, super, super watery uh, paint, like 98% water and a tiny bit of blue. I just kind of put this in there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go from bottom to top, working from the top of the sky down. And this is going to be a little bit um, less dense with color. So I'm only putting on the main color on the very, very bottom. And then from there on, I'm adding white to it. So if you need to pre-mix your paint, now is the time to do that. You can pre-mix, it's okay. Um, if you're newer and you need to pre-mix, that's totally fine. Um, it'll be a lot easier to blend those paints if they are pre-mixed and like ready to go. So I'm going to put this kind of just on the edges and I'm going to go in with my white pretty much immediately just with what's on my brush and get some more white even. I'm going to blend each section, I'm just adding a little bit of white right above that color, and then I'm just gonna blend it in to the color I just had. So I'm putting white in this section, and then I'm gonna blend it down. A little bit of white, I'm gonna blend it down. I'm gonna grab white and it's just mixing with what's in my brush. I haven't pre-mixed these colors. And after I make sure that all of my um, color is pretty much mixed in, if you need to make anything darker, you can pull it from the bottom up. like that. Um, but now we're going to take this blue that we had and with a little bit of white We're just going to blend in a little bit of this. And allow that edge to blend together a little bit. And if you need to grab a different brush to help it blend together, you can do that. Like maybe I'll take um, like a clean flat brush and kind of blend that part.
See how it kind of blurs it out a little bit? So just take that clean brush and go over the edges a little bit. Now I'm gonna go in with my white. And lighten up the bottom just like we did up here. And what I'm gonna do while this is still wet, I'm gonna put a little bit of white on the places that I intend to put white on the top. It doesn't have to be perfect, just a little bit. And just blend it in a little bit. And that's pretty much all it will take. All right, so now that we have that, um, we don't really need to do anything else other than um, at the very top, we're gonna add just a little bit of black and blend that into um, that section. because that will be the, that's gonna be the um, reflection for the shrubs that we haven't painted yet. So allow that to blend in just a little bit. Now we get to do our snow. So this is a really fun part. So go ahead and make sure you have a clean palette knife to work with. Um, go ahead and grab your white. And what we are going to do is we are going to, um, theoretically you can choose whatever side you want. I chose the right side. Um, so I'm going to Take some white on only half, on only part of mostly on um, one side. And if you want to practice this, do it on part that is not going to be seen. So you can kind of get the hang of it first. You can even try it over here. And you can see that these are just kind of starting to flow in. So as I'm going down, I'm slowly starting to flatten my brush. Barely touching and allowing it to kind of glide and kind of take over a little bit. Um, in my opinion, it's better to have not enough than too much. So start off with just a little bit. You can always add more. 
can't really can't really take away. Just kind of have fun with it. Um, so then what you're going to do is you're going to take that same white and you're going to add just a little bit of that blue that we used for the, like the purpley blue that we used for the background. And just add a little bit of that to it. I'm going to add a little bit more white so I have a little bit more to work with. And this will be the snow that's in the shade. You're just going to put it on all the places that are tucked behind your other snow caps. And if there's any spots that you feel like like have too much going on, like you accidentally put too much paint on or whatever, just take your palette knife if you if that's what you're using today and you can just like scrape out some of the sections to bring some of that um, darkness back. If that's what you want to do.
All right, so that's pretty much that on the um, on the mountains. Um, feel free to play around with that um, for as long as you <laughs> need to. It's not necessarily like an easy thing if you've never done it before. It can be really intimidating, but just keep going and it's gonna look great. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is I'm going to wipe off my palette knife. And if you didn't have a palette knife, if you don't have a palette knife, um, one, you should really get one, get a, get a set. Um, they really do come in handy for texture and mountains and all sorts of things like that. Um, but uh, if you didn't use that, you could do some sort of um, similar effect with um, a brush. Um, or something else that's like flat, like a normal knife. Um, but yeah, just have fun with it. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the uh, to the foreground. Um, so we're going to do this section um, with the greenery. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my black with my small filbert. And the reason why I like to use filbert for this is because there's just like this natural um, round look to it. I'm just going to create a kind of fluffy top to this. These are trees, these are bushes, these are really whatever you want them to be. I'm not really worrying about off to the side because that's just gonna be covered um, by trees anyways. So I'm really just focusing on um, this section. And I'm just going to dab on the top if needed. Um, Make it more tree bush esque. And if you have parts that are still um, wet, don't worry about it. Just um, either keep going or you can kind of just go around that part until it dries and you can always come back. I am going to make sure that this water line is covered. I do want to cover that um, that yellow line. I'm just going to fill this part in with black, even though I know it's not totally going to matter. Getting a first coat on that black is fine anyways. All right, so now that we have that kind of first coat, we're going to let this dry and go ahead and put in our little, um, I don't wanna call them jetties, but little parts that are coming out here.
I'm gonna put this one So I'm just filling in this whole area with black. Because one is going to come up this way, and the other one is going to come up this way, and then this is going to be going to be little uh, little bushes So that's essentially what we're doing. I'm gonna come off here, off the page a little bit. All right. So I'm not really going to worry about this edge right here because that is going to be covered up. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like. Um, right now, though, we're going to go ahead and do the greenery. Um, I'm going to do the greenery. So let's go ahead and get out some green. And I'm going to mix this with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of brown. Maybe even a little bit of blue too. Um, and if you've ever watched a Bob Ross video, you'll, you'll know that he does this really cool thing with water where he um, puts some, some stuff on it and then he goes over it to make it look like, um, like water. Um, so what we're going to do is while you guys are creating the green, I'm going to show you a technique and then you can figure out whether or not you want to do it too. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a toothbrush and a little bit of white. I'm going to get my brush wet. So I have water and white in my toothbrush. And I'm going to put it up against here, flick it, and I'm just going to go across. Now I can tell that that didn't really do anything because I didn't have enough white. So that means I need to get a little bit more white. 
Let me try again. I'm covering up the top because I don't want to get speckles on. And I'm just going to take my brush and go across it. And you can do that as many times as you want. I'm going to do even a little bit more white. I'm just going to gently take my brush over it. And that's a fun technique that you can kind of incorporate. Um, another thing that you can do to make it look like um, water is by doing some lines with like a liner brush of some sort and going all the way across with some lines. Like that. And it's totally up to you if you're not um, good with lines then I would highly recommend doing the toothbrush thing. But yeah, that's kind of two different techniques that you can use to kind of um, do that. I do think that I need a little bit more white on my um, in my reflection, so I'm actually going to Put a very watery version of it and add some that add some because I didn't put enough of that over there I'm just using my brush that I used for the clouds and some just watery white and I'm just adding white in the places that I feel like need more white and because I'm doing it in a very um, loose way it's already got that kind of like blurry effect that the reflection should have so it's actually working out really great. And I'm only doing that because as I was looking at it, I was like, I think this needs to be, um, needs to be lighter. That looks a little bit better. Looks a little bit more cohesive. Um, okay, I'm gonna grab my green. And I'm gonna grab it with a whatever brush that you like to do foliage with. So a lot of times I will take my, um, let's see, I'll take my Filbert brush, this one. And I'll just kind of dab it a little bit. And I'll use that. To give that kind of foliage look. 
The part with this is this is going to go on in layers. So we're doing like the darkest part first. Um, and we're going to be adding lighter colors. So I'm going to take some of that and go ahead and add just the tiniest bit of white. We're going to do the same thing and just in some other spots, not all the spots. We're just going to add some of these colors. Try not to cover up all of the black because without the without the dark you can't have the light. So you need that you need that darkness of the black. top of here because I feel like the stuff on the top would be the greenest because it's what's like hitting the sun like the sun is hitting that first so I don't feel like there would be any black really on the the top of it So there's that. I might come in and put a little bit more black in here. I think I covered up too much on the bottom. Sometimes that happens and you can come in and just add bits and pieces. Just like that. I think that's good. Now it is time to put in our trees. So go ahead and grab uh, whatever one you want to do, uh, whatever brush you like doing for your trees. I wanna go ahead and do my large filbert because they are bigger trees. I'm gonna grab a little bit of water And I'm gonna put in the stock. I'm gonna put in not stocks. I'm gonna put in the um, the trunks first, so I know where everything is going. This one here is very close to the sky. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to use the edge of your brush and you're going to go all the way down. Back and forth.
I'm just going to go back and forth. And I'm almost going in a swooping motion with my brush. put a third tree right here because as Bob would say he needs a friend they need a friend <laughs> I'm gonna put my other one goes right here I go all the way up And then this one is going to be right here. I think this tree lives right here. Yep. Yep. And this one needs a friend. If you're too afraid to start at the top, um, a good thing to do would be to start at the middle. Figure out what your brush is doing and how it's laying how it's laying paint on the canvas, and then you can work your way up. And then you can kind of choose the adventure from there. You don't always need to cover up all the background. You can still see through the tree. And I'm going to do a little bit of bushes. So I'm just using, I'm using this and I'm pushing up, essentially the opposite of the trees where I push down. Because that was creating some fun textures. So I'm just doing that on the edges right there. And I think I might even do that with the, the green, it's kind of cool. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rinse that off and I'm going to come back in with my um, my smaller brush, my smaller filbert. Start adding in this 
green. I'm going to start over here like I was. Try to figure out where the, the light is hitting it. I stuck my elbow in paint, so give me a second. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, so we're, I'm going to say since the sun is coming from the right on the mountain, that's probably also coming from the right on the trees. That would make sense. There's probably not a whole lot of light coming through. This area. But I want to see what this brush does. I really like that. So I'm pretty kind of using this on like as like the edge of it. So at, I'm kind of just like laying it down a little bit, but this, this right here is a new thing. I've, I've never done this with this brush specifically for, I just kind of figured this out as I was doing it. I usually use my Filbert brush. Um, so this is kind of a fun, I always love finding new things that I can do with certain brushes. Um, and this is a really, this is a really fun one. So I'm going to come behind here with a little bit more white in my green with the Filbert. Just add a little bit more. I'm going to add just a little bit, just with a little bit of water. I'm going to add a little bit of a, um, of a reflection here. Just a little bit of water. So, 
now what I'm going to do is you can do this with a palette knife or um, not. Oh, actually, let me do let me do the other side first because I forgot to do that first. Um, what are we seeing is that uh, we're going to add some water lines. So you can do this with a normal round brush um, or you can do it with a liner brush or a um, or a um, palette knife, however you want to do it. I'm just going to go ahead and put in a line all around the water's edge. This is also where you can add in those lines if you haven't done those yet. And then I'm going to add little bits of flowers peeking out. So I'm going to grab a brush that I like to do stippling with. This is just an older brush that kind of separates. And I'm going to put little bits of flowers popping out in different places. And try to make it random. Try not to put them all perfectly spaced out, you know. Maybe there's a couple little bundles of things. Is pretty much that and I'm gonna go ahead and finish it off with some cute little birds far off in the distance and essentially how I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna start in the middle and go in a curve up and then go in a curve in the other direction
might add just a tiny bit lighter hue of green to the bushes just to give some distinction um, between the trees and the um, the rest of it but that's just like a personal preference if you don't if you depending on your greens you might not have to do that you might not want to do that I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of yellow like it. I'm going to add a little bit more white in the water, but other than that, pretty much done. that's pretty much it thank you so much for joining me I look forward to our next class uh, let's see gotta run we'll finish later perfect hi Smith I missed a class but I'm gonna try it do it later yours looks beautiful as always thank you Paulette um, yeah so we're pretty much done um, thank you so much for joining me I do have a um, a Facebook community, a free Facebook community where you can share your painting and I would absolutely love it if I could see yours too. Um, I always think that, that it's so much fun um, being able to paint with you guys. So let me go ahead and um, give you the link to that now. You can also look it up on my Facebook. Just look up Samantha Anderson Artist and you will you'll find it. Um, but yeah, thank you. And I hope you enjoy the class. I hope you learned from something from it. Um, I plan to do one of these a month just as a, you know, a beginner type class. If you have any feedback, feel free to leave that below. Um, I'm always, I'm always down to taking feedback, um, especially for beginner classes. Cause sometimes when you've been painting for such a long time, it's hard to remember like what it was like as a beginner um, and just like some of the struggles that you guys face. Um, so feel free if you're struggling with something specific or even in general, uh, leave a comment down below and I'd love to, uh, as a reminder for me as a teacher to remember to say certain things or teach certain things because sometimes I forget that it's not, you know, either common knowledge or I've just been doing it so long that it's just intuitive for me. Um, so if you have things like that, please, please post them down below, post them in our community group. Um, and, um, yeah, thanks so much for joining me and we will see you next week. We are painting a very, very pretty, uh, Dahlia. It's a pink Dahlia. Um, it's just part of our big flower series that we're doing. Um, and yeah, we will see you then. Have a great night or morning whenever you're watching this. And uh, we'll paint with you again soon. Bye, guys.